טוב שם משמן טוב, ויום המוות מיום היוולדו. Uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, symmetry and uh, maybe a rhyme of some sort or play on words. Uh, the verse in Kohelet and Ecclesiastes in the beginning of 7th chapter, which by the way starts with a uh, large letter tet. It's one of the few uh, places in Tanakh where the letter is written larger than usual. Tov, Shem, Mishem, and Tov. A good name is better than uh, good quality oil. You see the symmetry? Tov, Shem, Mishem, and Tov. Right? The words Tov beginning and the end of this phrase and then in the middle are Shem and Shemen, which sounds similar. Name and oil. The, be- the good name is better than a good oil. Um, and the day of death is better than the day or when the person is born. Meaning, in the context of the first half of the verse, the good name a person acquires until the end of his life, his or her life, and if, of course, uh, the person sins even at the end of the life, and uh, uh, if a person does something really bad in the end of the life, and uh, uh, people know about it, so his reputation is now messed up, so the good name can become a bad name at the end of the life, so the, it's only at the end of when the person dies, is it's known, he, the summary of his entire life, the culmination of the entire life, happens at the time of death. Uh, it's known in this uh, uh, so-called famous uh, rabbi's experiment, when the proponents of Torah codes uh, asked uh, various statisticians and mathematicians what experiment they would like to either confirm or deny the findings, the experiment that was proposed was to take the rabbi's names and their dates of death, and if it's known, their dates of birth. Because not every rabbi people know when he was born, but almost all, every time uh, there is a, an important rabbi, the day of death is known. The yortzet is always known. So whether this experiment confirmed the Torah codes or not, I'm not going to discuss. It's still a very controversial topic, but at the very least, one thing for sure, most people's deaths are much wider known than the than the day of, 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 of birth. It's the day of death that uh, summarizes the entire life. So this is the verse in Kohelet from which the Midrash starts off, because of course in our Parsha uh, we are told that the main supervisor of uh, the building of the Mishkan is a person by the name of Bitzalel. Ben Uri Ben Hur, son of Uri, who was son of Hur. So who was this Hur, and where did this Bezalel come from? So his lineage is actually outlined in Sefer Divrei Yamim, the last book of Tanakh, where a lot of genealogies are mentioned, and it says there that Kalev took uh, a woman named Ephrat as a wife, and she gave birth to somebody named Hur, and that Hur gave birth to Uri, and Uri gave birth to Bezalel. Now, Hur is assumed as the same Hur as mentioned in the Torah for the first time in the end of Beshalach, when he was standing with Moshe and Aaron, supporting the hands of Moshe. If you remember, with the, during the battle with the Malachites, Moshe was trying to keep his hands up, but it was very difficult, and Aaron and Hur were supporting him from both sides. So Aaron, of course, is brother of Moshe, but who was Hur? Hazal say that the frat that's mentioned in Divrayamim was actually Miriam. And they claim that Kalev, that same Kalev who was one of the spies, he and Miriam got married, and they had the son Hur. So according to this, Hur was the son of Miriam. It makes a lot of sense, of course, that Moshe was supported by his closest people, his brother and his uh, uh, nephew according to this. But there's a different tradition that uh, Josephus Slavius brings that apparently Hur was uh, the uh, husband of Miriam. What's even more interesting, in my opinion it's more interesting, is that it's not clear at all that Kalev that's mentioned in Divriayamim here is the same Kalev as the one who later was one of the two spies who brought good report, as opposed to the ten spies that said not to go into the land of Israel, as we we'll learn in Pashat Beshalach. The two spies, Yoshua and Kalev, Kalev ben Yifune, 
said that we will succeed and were proponents of going to the land of Israel. And this Caliph bin Yifune apparently was a much younger person than Caliph bin Hetzron. Hetzron was the grandson of Yehuda. If you remember, Yehuda from Tamar had two children, uh, Peretz and Zerach, and from Peretz came Hetzron, and this Hetzron had Caliph. So this seems to be a person who was much older, who lived back in Egypt, and at some point, long time ago, uh, long before the exodus from Egypt, he took some woman named Ephrat, which according to Hazal was Miriam, and he, they had the child named Hu. So it would seem logical that it's not the same uh, caliph, and that's what Ibn Ezra and many commentators say. It's interesting that the Gra, in his commentary to Divri Ayamim, the Villagown writes that one caliph's daughter was the other caliph's wife. At any rate, there's clearly a tradition that Hur somehow was related to Miriam, uh, whether, it, whether it was her husband or her son, and therefore Bitzalel would become either great-grandson or grandson of Miriam. And uh, his name, of course, was very important, and uh, the name Bitzalel, according to Hazal, is a kind of hint to his great understanding, as if he is in the shadow of Hashem. Bitzel Aleph Lamed. Tzel is shadow. He was in, shadow, in the shadow of Almighty, as if when Moshe was told how to construct the tabernacle, the Mishkan, uh, Bitzalel knew the secrets and understanding of all this. That's why it says that he was filled with uh, Chochma, Tvuna, and Dat. Three types of wisdom and understanding, right? Usually people are accustomed to Chochma Bina Dat. Of course, Chabad movement is uh, based on these three letters, Chabad, Chochma Bina Dat. But Tvuna is very similar to Bina. There are certain distinctions which I'm not going to go into right now. So this Bitzalel was filled with all kinds of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to be able to build the Mishkan, which of course had to be not just physically built correctly, but had to have the spiritual uh, ingredients, if I could call it that way. And he was called by Hashem to be the supervisor, together with Ahaliav ben Achisamach from the uh, tribe of Dan. It's, just, it's interesting also that Hazal learned, based on Sefer Divrayamim, that the person who was later supervising the building of the temple in the times of Shlomo, King Solomon, also was from the time of the tribe of Dan. He lived in Lebanon of the time. At that time, Lebanon, of course, was not uh, the nation that lives in Lebanon today. Uh, the, now the Arabs live there, like in all the other places around the land of Israel. But at those times, uh, it was uh, ancient Phoenicians who lived in Lebanon. And they had excellent relations with David and with Shlomo. They helped us construct the temple. And among other things, it mentions that the person who lived in Lebanon, in Tyre, Tzor, biblical Tzor, an ancient city that still exists in Lebanon. So he was taken from there and also was filled with Chochma, Tvuna, and that, those same three qualities, understanding and wisdom and everything, so that he could help and supervise the building and construction of the temple. And he was also, at least from the mother's line, according to Hazal, uh, from, uh, from the tribe of Dan. But Bitzalel was from the tribe of Yehuda. So there's another interesting thing that we learn from here, that two supervisors of the building of the Mishkan, one was from the tribe of Yehuda, which was a very special tribe, very... Uh, and privileged tribe in a certain sense, but even Dan, which was not particularly privileged in any sense, and yet, once a person is capable, he's capable, and uh, the Torah does not discriminate, so one of the two supervisors came from a, uh, an, a family that was, was not of great importance, you would think, but since he was capable and, and good at it, so he was chosen as the second supervisor of the construction of the Mishkan. And on this I'm going to end for today. If you like this video, please press like and please subscribe to our channel.